Hi right guys, so this is day four of the Egypt vlog. Um, this is probably the best day we had, probably the day that we learnt the most whilst out there. So we all packed up because we were going back up to Cairo for the pyramids in the evening. But today we wanted to do the Hatshepsut um, temple and then do Valley of the Kings. So this was the first day we saw hieroglyphics and how well they were maintained in the temples and tombs. Um, so this is the Colossi of Memnon. Uh, they're two massive statues of the king Amenhotep III. Uh, they used to guard the tomb, but the tomb was destroyed by an earthquake. So this is like a mini market on the way up to the temple of Hatshepsut. Uh, this is a mini um, like bird's eye view of it, 3D model. Um, so that's it, carved like into the mountain at the bottom. Really cool. Uh, this is the walkway up. Um, so Hatshepsut is probably most famous for being the first like lady king. Um, so she originally ruled as regent to her stepson, Thutmose III, who inherited the throne at the age of two, so obviously wasn't able to properly rule Egypt. Um, and then eventually she did get the full position of pharaoh. Um, so getting the full Egyptian title made her a co-ruler alongside Thutmose III. Um, and then kind of, so that she was almost accepted as a pharaoh, she was often depicted with masculine traits, had male clothes, um, all that she did a lot of like the male things so that she would be accepted. So they believed that when she was ruling, um, it was a very peaceful time for Egyptians, not a lot of wars. Um, no one was trying to take over other countries. So I think it was a quite peaceful time to be an Egyptian. So she died 22 years into her reign. Um, they think that Amen Hotep II probably killed her so that he could get onto the throne um, as quick as possible. Um, so people believe that she was buried in the same t tomb as her father, Thutmose I, in the Valley of the Kings. As you walk around like the temple, a lot of her katushes and um, statues were destroyed, and they think it was because Amen Hotep II wanted to just delete her from Egyptian history. Um, there's obviously a few katushes lying about still, and that's how it's recognised today, but... There's a lot of paintings and a lot of um, scratches on the wall where people have tried to obviously rub out her name or her picture. So this is an alabaster shop. It's quite a famous stone in Egypt. Um, it's when you put it, it's translucent, so when you put it to light, it kind of, it shows through, which is really cool. Um, and then this is them showing how it was made. Yeah, we've got some nice pieces from there. Um, so this is now Valley of the Kings. So this is a, obviously a 3D model of what the tombs look like from underneath the ground. The longest tomb in the Valley of the Kings is the tomb of Seti the first. So it's 450 feet long and goes down 200 feet into the ground and has 11 chambers. So this is Ramses the fourth temple, son of Ramses the third. Um, he was 21 when he became Pharaoh and only had a reign of six years. Um, so probably one of the shortest reigning pharaohs. Um, so this is what you see as soon as you walk into the temple. Um, it was absolutely breathtaking just seeing how well it was all preserved and the amount of detail that goes in and how much time they would have spent carving all these hieroglyphics and painting them into the wall. Um, it was just amazing. You just can't quite get your head around it. Um, so on the roof there is Nut, Shu and Geb. So Nut is the long, the long body, and she represents the sky. So she'll swallow Ra each evening, which is the setting sun, and give birth to him each morning, which is obviously sunrise. Shu is the one underneath, and he hold, he separates the sky and the earth. Um, and then Geb is the earth. So this tomb is Ramses nine. Um, he was the third longest serving king of the 20th dynasty um, and he reigned for 18 years and four months and died in his 14th year. So again, it's just amazing how well preserved it all was. You see it twice and you still can't get your head around it. Um, so that was his katouche there. And then obviously all the hieroglyphics and the story that they wanted to show. So the whole point of the the paintings in the tombs was to create a pleasant afterlife for the dead person. So it showed them journeying through the afterlife and getting through cleanly and all that stuff so that when it was found like we did, it would show that it was a good king or queen. 
just a little bit to show how well hidden the tombs were inside the rock. Obviously, they did start with pyramids, but it was so easy to to um, rob. So they decided to start building into the cliffs. So this was the tomb of Meren Peta. He was the 13th son of Ramses II, and he reigned for 10 years. Um, he was actually 70 years old when he came into power, and the only reason that he did get into power because all his other brothers had died, um, and he was obviously the last one left. Um, so he's most famous for um, the victory stele of Meren Peta, um, which is basically a granite stone um, of his victory over the ancient Libyans. So this was a stone sarcophagus, um, obviously little inscriptions there, and then you can see there a little um, outline of where his uh, other sarcophagus would go inside of that. So the room in that the sarcophagus was actually in was actually pretty destroyed. So that there is a little um, carving of Isis, the goddess of healing and magic. She was one of the main um, characters in the Osiris myth, um, where she resurrects her brother um, Osiris and um, protects Horus. It is actually a pretty deep tomb, so this is us just struggling to get back out. Uh, we can see how far it actually goes. It's amazing that they were able to do that and then obviously create the walls and carve all the hieroglyphics in. Um, so the next temple, probably the last temple, I want to say it was the last, was Tutankhamun. Obviously one of the most famous pharaohs in Egyptian time just because of how um, well preserved his tomb was. Obviously it wasn't founded until the 19th century, so all his belongings, nothing had been robbed. No one had found it until then. Um, so it was obviously quite a small room because his reign was so small. Um, again, one of the shortest reigning pharaohs. Um, so that's his mummy. Uh, which was pretty small. Um, so the guy was showing us that what he had like a little hole in his foot. So he thinks that he used to have a bit of a limp um, when he was walking. So all the pictures in his tomb were what he wanted people to think his life was like in the afterlife um, so that people could see how good it was and how good a king he was because obviously the better you have in the afterlife, the better king. Um, you were when you were alive. So this is our lunch stop. Um, again, we had some pretty classic Egyptian food. Um, it's a really nice restaurant, nice vibes. Um, so had some lamb and some chicken that we, me and Eloise shared. Um, and then this was the little restaurant. Our next stop was Karnak Temple. Um, so it was built by Senesret the first and finished by Nectanebo the first. Um, so this is what it would have looked like fully finished. Obviously it's in ruins, um, as you can see. So the temple is dedicated to the god Amun ra who was recognised as the sun god, um, but he was also the creator of the entire universe. So his equivalent would be Zeus. So he's obviously a very powerful um, god. Um, so this is Ram's Road that leads to the temple. So it connects Karnak Temple with Luxor Temple. And in between each ram is a statue of Ramses II. Um, although he didn't build it, he was reigning at the time. So he, he put a little statue of himself in between. So that was a statue of Ramses II as well, um, with what is believed to be one of his wives. No one knows which wife um, because there's no cartouche. So um, it's quite clever of him to do that, obviously. The wife, every wife thinks it's for them, but obviously he only he knows which wife it's for. That was an obelisk um, that was dedicated to Armin. So there's one at Karnak and one at Luxor as well. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. We have an obelisk in Embankment, obviously Cleopatra's Needle. So definitely recommend going there if you have time. So there's the other needle um, dedicated to Armin. Um, so this is the Sacred Lake. Um, so it's man-made. It was home to the Sacred Geese. Um, and also is used by priests um, for rituals. So that was the scarab beetle. Supposedly if you walk around it seven times, uh, you get good luck. So these columns um, with the hieroglyphics and the cartouches on were re meant to represent the papyrus flower. Obviously one of the things that Egypt's most famous for is creating the papyrus paper. Um, so they had columns either papyrus shaped like that or they had it the lotus flower shaped obviously. 
their national flower. Um, so we're now at Luxor Temple. So the six statues there is Ramses II. Um, so the two sitting down is obviously him on his throne. The one standing up in the middle is him going to war. Um, and then the one on the end was him dead um, as a mummy. So this is us walking through it. Obviously, again, it's just unbelievable how they've managed to build this and then carve the columns. And again, you just can't quite understand how how they've actually done it. But um, So the guy's showing me the mosque of Abu Haggag. I hope I said that right. Um, which is still in use. So technically, um, the whole temple is still in use and it's the oldest temple that is still in use. Um, so the temple was actually built by Ramses II and Tutankhamun. So this is a little statue of him and believed as his wife, Ankhesenamun. Um, hopefully I said that right. So these columns are in the shape of the lotus flower, obviously different to Karnak temple. Um, so lotus flower is obviously the national flower and represents uh, love. So these are all the pharaohs that contributed to either building or adding temples or all that kind of stuff to Luxor Temple and Karnak Temple. Um, so we're now on our way back up to Cairo for our second last day. So this is the Mamluk Pyramids Hotel. Definitely one of the best hotels purely for the view, which we'll show you in a minute. This is a little room tour. Um, so again, said it was our birthday, so we got another cake and a little swan and some balloons. Um, and then we had to pay extra purely for this. Obviously, you see a little bit of the outline of the pyramids, um, but you get a bit of view in the morning. Um, and then all the lights and everything that was going on in the city was um, pretty cool to see as well. Um, so we got there pretty late, but we had a little bit of dinner, a um, little Caesar salad and a nice little pizza to finish off day four.